from our guys. Uh, this group tends to be at their best when um, maybe they're they're counted out. Uh, we talked uh, in in the pregame, obviously, about being shorthanded, but uh, I promised the players if they gave maximum effort, um, I was certain we would get a, a result and bring points back to Philadelphia. Uh, it's a good example. And another thing we said in the, the pregame, uh, 11 guys together can beat any group of, of individual talent. And I thought that uh, the players executed really, really well. We played out of a, uh, a flat 4-4-2, which was something different, but they, they took information, uh, frustrated a really, really talented uh, Portland team that I, I will tell you right now, we'll, we'll score a lot of goals in this league and beat a lot of teams because uh, they have a really, really good group. But overall, full credit to the players. They deserve it. Um, proud of them. Six, seven starters missing uh, and everybody stepping up in a, a big way and executing. Jonathan Tannenwald. Thanks, Erica. Jim, congratulations. I want to ask you about Michael, who, who I'm sure had you tearing your hair out a couple times there, but uh, it paid off in a lot of ways in the end in stretching the back line the way he did, assisting on the third goal, yeah, playing the playing the whole game for what I believe was just the sixth time uh, in his union tenure. What did his night, his night mean to you? Yeah, he was tired too at the end, Jonathan. <laughs> Everybody was exhausted. Everybody put in a good shift. Obviously, uh, uh, a, a small bench, but Mikel did uh, a good job. Uh, uh, I'll still be hard on any striker uh, and one of his quality to to score that chance in the first half uh, to go up 2-0 uh, as well. The 1v1 that he had uh, had some good actions in the second half as well. A uh, little little breakaway where he showed his speed and pulled away from McGraw um, and, and then obviously had a great assist on the on the third goal. So uh, a really good performance from Mikel. I thought him and Julian in particular, they're – their back pressure defensively on a player like Chara uh, was was really important on the night, um, and overall uh, they set the tone for us tonight. And and you know we score three goals on the road, which is not easy to do. Still mad that we conceded. Um, I think we could 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 get that one cleared, cross blocked, and at the back post still get ahead to that. But overall, uh, we'll take it. A lot of really good performances from guys. Mikel uh, was was strong, uh, but there's a lot of credit to go around tonight. That third goal, the celebration, and Julian scores and he goes, he gives Michael a big hug, and the whole team goes over and embraces them both, but really embraces Michael, at least so it looked on the TV broadcast. And I wonder what that says to you about their recognition of what he did to Yeah, that was a big cross. You know, that's a cross that I would say on grass maybe doesn't get there, Jonathan, but on a, on a nice, wet, slick turf, that's the ball to play, a hard-driven ball. Uh, like that and the timing of Julian's run. Uh, and it's no coincidence, man. I say it to them all the time. The harder they work for us, defensively setting the tone, that's when those tap-ins come. And it, it, the game is, uh, while, while it can be a cruel game, it, it is the fairest game in the world. And, and the more you work and the more you're together and the more you have your the back of your teammate uh, and you, you're willing to fight for him, uh, the more you get rewarded. Um, it tells the truth every time. Uh, and Mikel was rewarded, and Julian were rewarded for their their hard work tonight. Matt to George. Jim, do you think because of the guys that you were missing, you guys played simpler and got back to basics in any kind of notable way from previous games? Yeah, look, look um, Matt, what we wanted to do is really make them earn everything tonight. So we thought, you know, sit a little deeper, two blocks of four where it's not the diamond, it's it's a flat four where now because their outside backs are really good coming forward, you know, that opponent for Marcus on the, the left was right in front of him. For Quinny, it was a little bit easier. You give him maybe a simpler job for uh, Rafa to do rather than flying out to Chara. We asked our strikers to to stay compact and – you know, you could you could hear it from up top and the guys relaying things to us. We were, you know, 20 to 25 yards front to back, all 10 guys. And that's a hard thing for any MLS team to break down. So I thought that the guys really executed well. You're right, Matt. We did simplify for sure, because let's be honest, um, you know, had guys playing a little bit in, in different spots. You had guys playing their first big minutes. And, and look, this is for a kid like Marcus, um, you know, when there's 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 almost 30,000 people here. It's loud. It's intimidating. Um, and, and he stepped up in a big way. So, um, we tried to keep it simple. 
I thought we were difficult to play against. You can go through. Bedoya was excellent. Raffanello quietly had a great game in the middle of the field. Not an easy assignment. Marcus playing out of position where, you know, you know, when he's defending, he's basically a wide midfielder. We told him when we won the ball, let's see it be like a left winger. You know, we said the same thing for Rafa. You know, it's it's a flat four, but when we win the ball, can you go a little higher into the 10 spot? So there was some fluidity and, and, and flexibility with it. But most importantly, Matt, we wanted to be tough to break down. Um, again, individual talent on Portland on a different night. Maybe they, they make a play and something else clicks. But I thought overall, we did a good job limiting uh, a really, really talented attack uh, on the night. Jose Nunez. Jim, congratulations and thank you, Erica. Um, I'd love to ask about the cohesive unit. Um, can't imagine you're asking for many more international breaks that are taking you, taking apart so many players and so many formations for you. But does this performance here on the road at a very tough place with the players that you had give you some confidence for maybe what you're going to face this summer with all of the rotating cast that you're going to have? Yeah, I, I think, you know, it's it's an audition for a lot of guys. Uh, it's a test for a lot of guys, and, and a lot of them passed tonight. Um, the, 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 the tricky part about this game, though, Jose, is that the next test is coming. And, and if you fail that one, it's a, it's a cruel game. So, you know, we have uh, had a good win tonight. Um, I think we learned a lot about some guys. I think, you know, like I said, Rafa really gave us good minutes. Marcus gave us a good minutes. Oliver gave us good minutes in goal with some big key saves. Um, and, and sometimes it's a it's a blessing that they're getting these minutes now because you're right, this summer we're going to miss them again. Uh, to the international windows, uh, look, every team in this league and every fan wants to watch all the best players be here. Um, the reality is we play through these breaks sometimes. Uh, it hurts other teams, some teams more than others. Uh, certainly it depleted us quite a bit, but overall uh, our group rallied around it, didn't complain, rolled up their sleeves uh, and got a result. But you certainly learn uh, each and every night, and you could go through each guy tonight, and a lot of them checked a lot more positive boxes than negative, and that's uh, usually when you come out on top. Regardless of how much another team spends, how many great superstars or individual talent they have, if 11 guys are cohesively together, you can beat any team. You sort of touched on my next question, and and I would actually argue not a so quiet game by Jeremy Raffanello. Some long shots away yeah. from that and, and really working hard. Uh, do you want to expand some more on his performance? I know you've touched on it a little bit now. Yeah, it's not easy. You know, it helps to have Ollie next to him. And I thought they did a great job of of sharing the load. Uh, and, and, you know, when you look at, especially at the end of the game, when Portland literally threw seven great attackers on the field, um, that's not easy to deal with. So um, to deal with a player like Evander, uh, you know, Moreno, when he came inside, you know, uh, uh, Anthony, you know, coming inside as well and and, and knowing when to, you know, make a tackle, make a block, hold your ground, cut out a passing lane. There's a lot of nuance that goes on for a, a central midfielder. Uh, and, and Jeremy really stepped up in a big way. Uh, look, he's a great kid that, that has worked his ass off year after year and finally got, you know, some big minutes tonight and, and is one of those guys that, like you said, passes a big test. And I, I hope it makes him grow in confidence and realize – you know what? I don't just want to be a, a squad player that's, you know, on the outskirts looking in. I can be a player that in the biggest moments against 15, 25, whatever amount of millions of dollars they had on the field, um, he did more than hold up. Uh, he made big plays for us in the attacking part. He made big plays in the defensive part. Uh, and that's what it's what it's all about. So really proud of Jeremy. He's a great kid. Like I said, great work ethic, great attitude. And uh always plays the game with a smile on his face. And I, I think, um, you know, it, it was rewarded with a great performance tonight and, you know, gets a half assist on that shot from distance too that Quinny finishes off. Thank you. Congratulations and safe travels. Thanks. Todd Lewis. Thanks, Erica. Jim, you talked about the big saves that Oliver made tonight, but how big was that save when Amanda right before uh, the half where it could have been one one. I mean, you you guys yeah. had the chance to go up two 0 with a Mikel chance. Yeah. How's it looks similar to what it was last week against Austin, where you guys had chances in the first half and only had the one goal lead. What was your message to the squad at half? Yeah, at halftime. Look, first of all, Oliver did play a, a, a great game. Um, you know, we talked about how, how they, the corner kicks were the only thing that gave us big problems. I thought, you know, where where Evander's almost just shooting corner kicks at us and um, trying to score off them. Talked about trying to give Oliver more space and almost boxing out guys and giving him a, a clear uh, line of sight and a, an ability to jump um, freely. Um, 
But overall, he had a great performance tonight. At halftime, we just said more of the same. Uh, I said that that's going to be an angry Portland team that comes out losing at, at halftime. Uh, they're going to come out flying in the first 15 minutes. You're going to get their very best punch. Um, so let's be up for it. Uh, I did talk about now the second goal can become – uh, the best defense. So being organized, being tough to play against the same intensity um, and they have to throw numbers forward. So we, we hit them a couple times on the counter. I thought we scored some good goals tonight and uh, overall uh, a, a really, really big, important win for the group. Andy Diosa. Thanks, Erica. Hey, Jim, you kind of talked about it uh, off the top and saying about a team responding to frustration First one of the season, obviously, but you guys also are undefeated. What is that dynamic like where I know you guys are not looking to go out there and tie, but you're yeah. up against it today. You have a challenge and then you have younger players come through for you. Caranza comes through for you. What is that dynamic like for you guys? Yeah, look, um, you know, the the first win is, is always important. I think it's also important to be difficult to play against. So there are still there is still some positives in, in the ties. Um, if you go through the season, right, I, I think I've I've summed it up pretty quickly. First of all, we've only played four games, so we have a game in hand. If you go Chicago, that's a bad tie. At home, we should beat Chicago. That's a fact. If we should uh, handle our business there, that's a bad tie, I would categorize. Kansas City in their home opener, uh, a point on the road there, stealing it at the end. I think uh, a, a good tie, you know, uh, the opposite. Austin, I thought we deserved more from, but this is the sport. Um, hang in there and, and get a point. Uh, and then I thought we were, we deserved three points tonight. You know, whether you're missing players, whoever you want to talk about or whatever you want to talk about, I thought we um, executed and, and deserved to win. So uh, it's a it's a deserved win. It's a, uh, a group that works really, really hard. Um, you know, it doesn't mask or cover the, the Pachuca embarrassing game that I think still lingers in everyone's head. But you are right. You bring up a good point. Um, you know, four games, we want more wins, of course, but um we haven't been beaten yet and now we get to go home um after playing three out of four uh league games on the road so we're pretty good there and hopefully we can have a good performance against minnesota uh this can give us some confidence uh winning is uh what what it's all about in this sport and uh that was a big three points tonight and jim just quickly you talked about it being obviously a different dynamic in the way you approach the game but 74 present session for Port, uh portland to 26 for you how, how, what does that say about the resilience of not that you needed to be, uh, I guess, reminded of the resilience of your team, but that you guys were able to grind it out in that manner? Possession without real penetration is useless. So you can have the ball you want. Um, you know, again, I think it's the worst statistic in the sport. It tells you nothing, um, you know, and, and oftentimes, you know, look, everybody, I think Guardiola and I love how his teams play. They're incredible, but I think he's shifted everyone's brain into thinking that, um, you're just going to have the ball the entire game. And that's that's one way to play for sure. Um, but possession without any real penetration or, or purpose is is kind of doesn't hurt. You know, I, I still think we had the better chances tonight. Um, and, and overall, yeah, that, that statistic, you know, at, at the end of games, you know, when a team's up two or three zero, you know, naturally the other team's going to add to their possession stats um, that people fall in love with. But I think as the years go by, people look less and less at at, at um, possession and, and more at um, what you do with your possession. I think they're going to get it analytically uh, a little bit sharper and 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 rather than just like the oh 52 48. Wow, what a what a great possession lead they had. It, it, it means nothing um, to me anyway. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Last two questions. We'll go to Jonathan Tannerwald and Matt DeGeorge. Thanks, Erica. Um... Jim, I want to go back to Oliver Semla, um, who's had good moments this year, but hadn't had a signature night quite like this yet. And what did that mean for him? Yeah, look, any any wins on the road, Jonathan, as you know, are really tough to come by. In this building in particular, when it's sold out and loud and, and scary and they have the attackers they have, to have a, a calming presence back there um, is important. And I thought he did a, a great job, um, you know, much like Andre does for us as well. So um, goalkeeping, you guys know how much I value it. It's worth 12 to 15 points every season at a, at a minimum. Um, so we're, we're fortunate to have uh, obviously Andre uh, and Oliver now uh, who is 
only going to get better, right? He's learning uh, what it's like at this level. I'm not knocking the the USL, but it is a step up, and he'll tell you that as well. You know, the the way that these guys hit the ball is is just different than uh, players that are in the USL. It, it just is is a totally uh, higher level. Um, so I thought that our guys uh, did a good job protecting him. Uh, I thought when he had to make a big save and come out and be big, he was. Uh, you know, didn't give up rebounds, little things like that on wet AstroTurf are, are big, as you saw on the other side where they did spill one and, and he gets punished. So um, those are the fine lines and the, the fine margins. But, you know, he's a good level headed kid, um, pretty straight faced and stone faced. I don't always know what he's thinking in there, but uh, I really do uh, like his demeanor in the back. And he did a good job for us. And I, I can't help asking. I just have to. It won't surprise you. Did you run into Juan Carlos Amoros in town today? Because I think he'd be mighty impressed with what your team did tonight. I did not. <laughs> I did not. Um, but no, over, look, again, anytime you went on the road, you, you're organized in a, two blocks of four. Uh, you kind of make it hard on the opponent. Uh, those are the wins that you, you you live for. So happy for it. And uh, got a long flight back to Philly now. You can get it at 7.30 a.m. But uh, the guys will enjoy this one. The I'll just say the the soreness, the bumps, the bruises, they hurt a little bit less on the plane uh, when you you have three points coming back to Philly. Thanks, Jim. Jim, where do you where do you view this game and kind of how you periodize the season? Because there's been a lot of chaos in the last yeah. few weeks with the midweek games and the the yeah. rain out. Do you see this as the start of kind of a of maybe a, a, a turning of the page of some of the early season form and some of the uncertainty getting back into the game every week or so how do you kind of view this in the bigger picture yeah we, i said it before and it, it's not an excuse it's just the fact we haven't had you know the group together you know and and train together very much this week we at least got to train for a week but it wasn't with uh you know seven seven guys that are on the the roster and uh two from union two that would normally be training with us so it's been disjointed. You know, Julian's missed games. Uh, Andre Blake's missed games to injury. So we haven't been us really too many times. Um, I think we've shown flashes. Um, and, and this win was about, and this game was just about whoever's here, what the names on the back don't matter. Let's play like us. Let's be hard to play against and, and uh, find a way to get a result. And, and I think that we did that. Um, and it's a big win, Matt. And I think you realize it too. Like, you know, if you, if you don't find a way to get a, get points here and, and it, it it's a loss you know you guys are talking to me about uh a winless streak you know what i mean and now now we're undefeated you know so again <laughs> it's the the fine line in semantics and the little details uh of a season so uh from that standpoint you're absolutely right this is a a huge team win um i will say i'd love a full week where everyone's healthy and here and we could train and build into something but i'm, I'm not going to get that um probably for several more weeks to be honest um you know with with the way um things are looking in, in terms of the schedule so hopefully we can get the full group together you know train but tonight all that aside guys stepped up in a big way and really proud of the group the players that were here all right thanks jim thanks everyone thanks